three of the MonsterVerse's largest titans just got more powerful, more freaky, and more intense. Today on Goji Center, we'll discuss the new information revealed on these three kaiju studying their official sizes and new abilities that will leave you with your mouth open. If you enjoy this sort of content, then dude, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button right now. Coming up, Tiamat, Amulek, and Nakika Explained. This episode will be split into three sections, each for every new Titan. In the new Omnibus release, we were given a plethora of creature profiles, including three new ones featuring these three Titans. Today, we'll be discussing information from many sources pointing out which facts are official and which ones were word of mouth by the creators of these kaiju. Making these episodes can sometimes be really difficult to pump out under time constraints, dealing with tight deadlines, research, burnout, and complicated software issues. We know some of you may go through burnout, as well as other things. Thankfully, our sponsor BetterHelp is here to save the day. Yes, stress can get the best of us sometimes, and perhaps you don't know where to start when it comes to looking for aid. So, with BetterHelp, you not only have the option to get matched up with a therapist within a few days, but also receive help online from the comfort of your own home. BetterHelp is making strides in providing access to therapy for everyone, making it both affordable and easy. It's remote, and by answering a few questions, you can get this ball rolling. This is all about your well-being, so if you think another therapist will suit your needs better, then you can change therapists at no extra costs to you. We all have our own issues and struggles. It's completely normal. Even if things are going well, sometimes we just need someone to talk to. So, if you ever feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash goji for 10% off your first month. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to number one, Titanus Tiamat. In the creature profile, Tiamat is said to be the embodiment of primordial chaos. Interestingly, the mythology behind this titan could have dated back to the time period where Mesopotamia was a flourishing land of advancing civilization. More than 8,000 years BC, where the well-known Babylonian civilization emerged from. The myth states that Tiamat took part in an epic battle that ultimately got her killed and overthrown by her own great-grandson Marduk. This association with conflict made her synonymous with the said embodiment of primordial chaos. But what other traits does this MonsterVerse Titan borrow from its mythological counterpart? In the lore, Tiamat had an established dominion before getting usurped by another deity. In the MonsterVerse, Tiamat made her home in Godzilla's lair, possibly killing anything currently living there, only to be later defeated and exiled by Godzilla. She is also associated with the Deep Abyss and Serpentine Body similar to some of the creatures Tiamat also created herself. But let's dig a little deeper into the biology of this kaiju. For starters, this animal shows traits of both reptilian serpents and eels. You'll see why in a little bit. First, we need to state the fact that this animal can thrive at sea and also on land. Why? Because it feeds on electricity. That's right, Tiamat is considered to be a bioelectrical titan, capable of transferring energy currents throughout its body causing something called electrogenic cells. So how exactly does Tiamat use electricity? This gets a little crazy. Using these energy currents, Tiamat will be able to boil the surrounding water at extreme temperatures, instigating a water cycle of sorts that creates powerful electrical superstorms, so massive that they can be seen from outer space. Additionally, the designer of this kaiju did state that Tiamat would be able to travel on land and in the air with water spouts instigated by this ability. This attribute to transmit energy throughout its body is seen in modern-day electric eels. These electrogenic cells found in Tiamat take form as something called electrocytes in these fish, serving as batteries that emit energy that can be felt in an area covering many meters. In Tiamat's case, this could be useful as a weapon or worse, a storm producer potentially killing many life forms on both land and sea. The similarities with snakes could rely on the way it moves and hunts. 
Note that this is a titan that can breathe on land and sea. Snakes are animals that, if in water, will need to go up to the surface for air. However, some species of sea snakes have adaptations that help them absorb waterborne oxygen through thin areas of skin underneath their scales, allowing snakes to stay underwater a little longer. In Tiamat's case, we could be looking at an exaggerated, evolved version of this, possibly looking at well-developed gills as seen here. Tiamat has a vast variety of weapons, one set being the array of sharp bladed fins that can cut deep, even through thick hides such as that of Godzilla. Using a blend of both constriction and cutting, Tiamat would be able to dispatch almost any titan using this method, especially those who aren't adapted to living underwater. In the real world, the cat's eye water snake uses this same method to eat hard-shelled crabs. Sinking fangs or constricting it wouldn't be enough, so it resorts to coiling around its target and grinding the edges of its tough scales on the victim and slicing it into chunks while still alive. We can see this similar methodology occur as Godzilla is getting sliced from all directions by Tiamat. What else? It does not take a genius to see similarities between Tiamat's venomous spitting ability and that of spitting cobras. This, however, is listed as phosphorus ink. Because venom is easily diluted in water, this means that it will lose its effect much easier if sprayed on another titan's eyes. Ink works differently. In the real world, most cephalopods store this ink in sacs inside their mantles. This ink, according to some research, is found to contain compounds that can irritate, numb, or deactivate certain sensory organs, similar to what happened to Godzilla in the graphic novel, making this weapon an equivalent of a flashbang of sorts. Ready for something trippy? This profile also tells us that Tiamat has been in containment for some time now, enough for them to learn to mimic sounds of other species using vocal folds in its tendrils. This could be used as a luring mechanism during predation, but what's more rare is that Tiamat was apparently able to mimic human voices. It doesn't talk, but certainly emits sounds that sound like that of humans. Probably implying a good sense of hearing, this titan, while in containment, would have heard the small voices of monarch scientists long enough to imitate them. Lastly, before we move over to the next kaiju, let's go over this titan's official size, which is stated to be at 847 feet in length. This makes it longer than the wingspan of Mothra, but still shorter than that of Rodan. Despite this, Tiamat's overall length in the comic does seem to surpass this metric being almost twice as long as Godzilla in these images. Perhaps this was the recorded size of Tiamat once it was under containment, then grew to a larger size after its escape in King of the Monsters. Similar to what happened to Godzilla between 2014 and 2019, he grew bigger. Now let's cover an even stranger titan whose biology will leave you with your head scratching. After we finish discussing this titan, we'll cover Nakika, which is known for an insane attribute that puts it on par with Kong. But first, let's cover number two, Titanus Amulok. The word Amulok originates from the Kalapuya lore of the natives that once lived in what is now the state of Oregon. Often portrayed as a ferocious, eerie monster that dwelled in forests and deep lakes, this creature was notorious for killing the surrounding plant ecology, uprooting trees, killing animals, and drowning people. Amulok was considered as a monster that was outside the natural order. The description would change quite frequently, but mostly described as an animal with a fanged face, horns or tendrils spotting from the head, bark-like skin across the limbs that lacked hair, and an enormous size. And this thing, for some weird reason, loved to send kids to the afterlife. We discussed this in more detail in a previous episode. Go check it out after this video! Given these traits from the myth and legend, it's only plausible that this animal would be of malevolent or destroyer nature. This is confirmed in the creature profile that we are about to discuss in a few moments. The mythical traits that translate in the Monster vs. rendition of Amulek are the following. The myth states that Amulek did have the bad habit of invading the territories of others and causing disruptions to the natural order of things. Amulek is associated with water dwelling and causing problems when coming to land. Horns, or in this case tendrils, are a notable component of this titan's face, being associated with chaotic plant life or barked texture on its exposed limbs while still being an animal in its basis, and finally its tendency to drown its victims. 
which is what it seems like Amulek was trying to do to Behemoth by taking him in deeper water, invading his home, and aberrating the surrounding plant life. So, even if this titan looks nothing like the original mythological description, it does carry over some important characteristics. The creature profile states that this is in fact the largest florifauna specimen they've ever encountered. This combination of words implies that this animal is half creature and half plant. But as we start to understand what this titan is composed of, we'll find out that half this creature is a bit of an exaggeration. Let us explain. The illustrator of this kaiju, Drew Edward Johnson, stated that this animal was composed of mostly hardened vegetation. This profile goes as far as telling us what type, vines, and redwoods. This makes some sense given that redwoods are one of the biggest and most robust trees on the planet. But how do these form a titan? It was also stated that the only real sentient part of this creature was the head and elongated nerve endings known as biotelekinetic transmitters, telekinetically being able to lift and form surrounding plant life into its limbs. These could be manipulated to give the illusion that these limbs could be stretched, increasing its reach. There are no animals in the real world that do the exact same, since telekinesis isn't a real non-fictional phenomenon that we know of. Sticklebacks are spiny fish seen to demonstrate tool use by constructing dwellings to hide from predators. Amulek didn't use this to hide from anything, but did use them as a disguise. Which is why this titan was often mistaken for a small island at times. In a previous episode, we mentioned that it was theorized that this titan emitted toxic discharges that killed surrounding organisms. This is confirmed now, given that this profile does state that it has organs that serve as toxic emitters that poison oceanic channels and rivers, poisoning animals and plants. But Amulek has gotten a little weirder. This animal does seem to have a mix of a fish-like face with tentacles or tendrils seen in many cephalopods. According to Drew Johnson, these could have been used to latch onto opponents and send psychic blasts directed at the brain. A risky move given that these could get bitten off. But if this animal shares some cephalopod attributes, these arms could possibly regenerate with time. How big is this animal? The creature profile gave us an exact figure of 379 feet in height, making it taller than Godzilla back in 2014, taller than Behemoth, and making Kong look small. This makes it one of the largest titans in this universe. But the creature profile did add a major weakness. Making use of these neurotransmitters to send signals to its limbs does make it susceptible to alpha frequencies, explaining why Godzilla was able to sense what was going on between Behemoth and Amulek at a distance. And weirdly, for some odd reason, Rick Stranton, head of Monarch, found that blasting loud music like Van Halen's cover of You Really Got Me from a speaker will do disrupt its nervous system. Disrupted nervous system, disrupted telekinesis, rendering this animal weak against other loud titans. Maybe this is yet another reason why this animal backed down so fast from Godzilla after a loud roar. Now, let's cover the final titan. Number 3. Titanus Nakika Originating from the mythology of the Gilbert Islands in the Central Pacific, Nakika's myth describes it as an octopus or cuttlefish of giant proportions that was called to patrol the seas and use its strength for creation and destruction. Some versions of the legends even describe it as somewhat human-looking. The attributes from the myth that migrate to the MonsterVerse rendition of Nakika are the following. Both the myth and titan are cephalopods with great strength and potential, and a highly intelligent sapient being which owes allegiance to a greater power, that being Godzilla in the MonsterVerse. This titan was actually somewhat accurate and true to its mythological counterpart. And with the new information obtained from the omnibus release, we are now aware of some wild facts. Nakika is basically a combination of several cephalopods that existed throughout time in a magnified scale. Described as incredibly intelligent, we know that this creature has brains in each of its tentacles, as well as having many hearts as well. The creature profile describes these tentacles' movements as if they were possessed with a bloodthirsty mind of their own, possibly tipped with sensors that served as the eyes of these arms, with each brain deferring to the commands of the main oversized brain that this animal supposedly has. 
In a previous episode, we discussed that Nakika was rescued by Godzilla, with the G-Man going as far as laying waste to an entire fleet just to save it from its captors. Immediately, you might think that Godzilla only rescues benevolent titans. But no, Monarch's creature profile now catalogs this animal as a destroyer. With good reason, as this animal apparently has a history of devouring entire ships for centuries. One of the major mysteries of this kaiju was what happened to its shell. In the novelization of King of the Monsters, this animal had a curved shell protecting it, and it was mentioned by the artist that Nakika lost it or left it sometime between 2019 and the events during Godzilla Dominion. This at first seemed like a lazy explanation, but that's why we're here, to explain stuff. Some cephalopods, such as octopi, have been known to demonstrate complex tool use and understanding of their environment, using objects like shells and coconuts as armor. Similarly, it's possible that Titanus Nakika could have used a shell of another kaiju to serve as armor when it was hibernating during its containment. The profile also states that this animal can crawl on land as well. Using viscous adhesive from its suction cups, this animal can walk on land, but in order to do this without losing its body shape, this animal would need an internal shell to support the integrity of the body shape on land. But what could Nakika do on dry ground? Would it be vulnerable in combat against other titans? The creature profile gives us two last additional dazzling abilities. But before we reveal it, let's just list out all the combat attributes we know so far about Nakika. 1. Surprisingly intelligent. 2. Optimized sensory organs such as vision and sensors on its tentacles. 3. Camouflage, able to change its coloration to almost anything. 4. Invisibility to both the naked eye and sensors. 5. Able to emit dead titan frequencies or trick state-of-the-art technology that it's deceased. 6. And finally, one of the crazy ones. This kaiju is capable of draining elemental energy from other titans by simply wrapping its tentacles around them, weakening the opposing titan and, in the act, becoming stronger. 7. We mentioned that Nakika was able to make landfall and crawl on the ground. It stated that this animal can snap off large, jagged pieces of seabed mantle and use them as projectiles. This is not limited to just rocks, but also naval craft such as submarines. Imagine witnessing Nakika rising on shore, throwing boats and yachts at other kaiju or at hundreds of people. The act of picking up and accurately hurling projectiles in the MonsterVerse was an attribute that was only attributed to Kong. Well, no more. Titanus Nakika has now received a major upgrade in both strength, intelligence, and even some form of dexterity. And let's not forget size as well. Oh yeah, Nakika is given a last upgrade. Measuring at 898 feet in length, making it the longest, if not the biggest animal on this list in terms of length. Which of these titans do you think received the most upgrades? Which ones do you think were nerfed? Let us know in the comments! If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, hit that subscribe button, join our members community, and like this video! Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode!